Hey, everybody. Randy Patterson here with Boomerosity. If you followed me for very long at all, followed Boomerosity, that is, you know that Mark Farner is a good friend of Boomerosity. Mark Farner, of course, is a co-founder of the great iconic classic rock band, Grand Funk Railroad. He's not with them anymore, but he's a co-founder and wrote about 90% of their songs. He's been always gracious in talking with us here and making time for us. And he's done this again to talk about this brand new album that you see behind me here called Mark Farner, Rock and Roll Soul, Live 1989. It was recorded at Liberation Hall and it's a rocker. Believe me, it's a rocker. So we took a few minutes to talk about the story behind the release of this album and why now, that type of thing as well as maybe something going on about a possible Grand Funk reunion. Who knows? Got to listen to see what the latest is from his, him on that. So please, as always, tell your friends about this interview. Share it with them. And please, 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 if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. We need that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. We just need you to do it because then it helps us on our end. So if you do that, I'd be eternally grateful. And please ask your friends to do it too. So without any further ado, here is interview number four with the great legendary Mark Farner. Until next time, this is Randy Patterson with Boomerosity. Take care. Hey, brother Randy. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? Well, I'm doing, but I ain't mill doing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. We don't want to be oldie moldies, do we? No, sir. <laughs> How's the weather up in your neck of uh, Michigan? We got uh, 39 degrees right now. It's supposed to be a high of 40. It's yeah. a it's a winter thaw after all the snow we've received so far, Randy. Wow, wow. We we're cold, but we're not quite that cold. I'm in the Smokies, as you might remember, and uh, it was uh, below freezing overnight. And I but I think we're going to be wind up a high in the 50s but it's going to be really cold overnight again snow up on the peaks above me here but um that's that's to be expected so yeah so well hey it's been a, a few months since we last spoke we talked about your uh, little instructional project that you had going on how has that been working out for you has it been pretty successful it's been great yeah a lot of people more people than i anticipated are really into uh, not only what I'm playing, but what I'm saying, because evidently just a little bit of kibitzing in between what I'm, you know, showing as far as instructional video on guitar, what chords I made uh, on keyboard, the way I play certain things. You know, guitar players play keyboards totally different than a keyboard player, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So... It's been going really good, Randy. Good, good. I, I, I hope there's going to be a lot more of that to come, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Very yes. cool. Yeah, at least 20 more right now in the can. Really? <laughs> wow. Very yeah, cool. <laughs> now, are you going to be doing like live workshop type of things in addition to this so that people might pay to kind of sit and breathe the same air as you while they're learning? No, I'm. Uh, that is not in the works. I don't have that kind of time. Gotcha. I'm writing. I'm recording. We're we're finishing this album that I've been working on with Mark Slaughter, and that will be ready in the spring. Mark Farner, Rock Patriot, and uh, there's a lot of good rock and roll on that thing, man. I I've been uh, very satisfied, and and the people that I played it for, um, you know, I play a little rough mix for somebody here and the rough mix of something else over here. And people are just telling me, I can't believe you're still singing like that. I can't believe you can still rock that way at 75, man. Wow. <laughs> you know, uh, great comments and uh, very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to touring and singing some of that music live to folks. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Before I forget, I forget the station call letter. She's going to call, uh, kill me over this, but uh, you recently were interviewed by a good friend of mine up in your neck of the woods, Steve Orchard, for one of the uh, uh, stations up there. Uh, yeah. Up in the, up in the UP, you know? So, yeah. uh, 
So a uh, good friend of mine, he told me to tell you hello. And um, he, he, he's a, a wonderful guy, very knowledgeable, and uh, we share war stories all the time. So <laughs> Will you, you tell him I said hello back at him, please? Will do. Will do. So, hey, you got this live album out now, man. Tell me yeah. about it. What brought all this together? Well, they called, um, they got a hold of my manager, and uh, Liberation Hall is the company, the record company, and they told Abby that they had found a tape that that impressed them enough to where they wanted to release it. It was a 20-year Woodstock celebration in uh, California. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my band, we were ready. It, as soon as they said, you want to play, we're going, yeah, let, hey, let's go do it. You know, we'll commit to it now. Because anybody that was associated with Woodstock, because of the, you know, the, the amount of press that that got and the amount of exposure, that that was really uh, people that, they came together and and they had a voice right then and and the the voice was the music that came out of Woodstock and the experience that they got and that that has been publicized so widely and uh, so I I'm geeked about this when they tell me about it and I said I said but please send me a copy of it so I can look at it so I can listen to it because. You don't want to commit to anything that might just sound crappy or, you know, mm -hmm. but I was very surprised that the recording, that uh, the audio was fine and the video was perfect. Uh, it's just a matter of people, you know, they got to run it through their filters or whatever they do. Now they can, they can do things to uh, old uh, tapes like uh, 35 millimeter tape, 16 millimeter tapes that that really correct a lot of the color and and, and crisp up the the, the video um, rendition of it. Mm -hmm. So when I saw it, I was like I said, I was very surprised. And I told Abby, I said, "Yeah, man, let's go ahead and let's release this." So it's out, rock and roll soul. So. That's at a general sense. Was there anything very specific, like when you watched it or listening to it and maybe some kind of light bulb of memory or something you never noticed before, anything like that, any kind of su other surprise besides the generic legs that it's that performance still has? Was there anything else a little more specific? that well, you're going holy crap yeah <laughs> they uh just the continuity of each member because even cooch our road manager tom Kuchalan, we call him cooch he's up there in his shorts things are happening that i don't know about randy i'm i'm up on that mic in front of these guys and i don't have the eyes in the back of my head so mm -hmm. Cooch is fixing stuff that the drummer, Mike Maple, was drumming on this. And something happened, and Cooch is over there. I mean, you see that. I didn't know, but the camera caught it, you know, from <laughs> out front. And he's catching all of the movement. And and I was going, you know, there was a lot go going on. And I had no idea that these problems had arisen. And the keyboard, uh, Mike Blair... There was something that happened over there. He had to stop and restart his rig or something. I mean, you know, some when you have a digital glitch like that in an instrument, sometimes it's just like an old computer. You got to turn the thing off. Reboot, and, yeah. And reboot. <laughs> you got it, brother. That's the technical version of hitting the Coke machine on the side, right? So <laughs> <laughs> That's right, brother Randy. So, so comparisons what um you you see that performance today from back then and you compare it to maybe earlier performances with your other band of brothers and your performances today how what does that all fit in what are your thoughts about comparisons of performances well tied com with that one yeah comparing with that one uh 
Now, I ha had a totally different band in 1989. There's only one carryover out of those four guys, and that is Arnie Vilches, who still does my acoustic shows with me. Arnie mm -hmm. Vilches is from California, and uh, when we do the acoustic uh, funk trio, Mark Farner's uh, ac acoustic funk trio, well, he comes out and tears it up. And, you know, when, when they say, hey, if you're going to add somebody to the band, make sure they're better than you are. Well, I did. <laughs> 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 and Artie tears it up. He's a great guy. He's got a great big heart. He's a fellow Christian. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to be a Christian. I'm a cussing Christian, you know. I probably wouldn't be welcomed in most churches, but I'll tell you, the Lord welcomes me every time I... Well, hey, most most churches aren't welcome in my life anymore, so there. <laughs> <laughs> I heard all of that, brother. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the difference in the, in the makeup of, you know, the characters, uh, Lawrence Buckner on bass guitar, uh, and Arnie was playing second guitar, plus he was doing guitar tech wow at the same time he was teching for me and coming out and playing on uh, isn't it amazing and playing on judgment day blues and come to jesus he was uh there those tunes are on there on uh this 1989 uh rock and roll soul recording mm -hmm. and this recording uh besides uh being unique, uh, having on the vinyl, there's only, I think, nine songs. So they, they got most of the funk stuff on the vinyl, but there's 15 songs total. And uh, of course, the DVD and the CD contain all 15. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're hearing from great musicians. I've always been blessed. God has supplied. When I, when somebody, you know, says, Hey, I got to go do this and I can't do this anymore. I start praying. I said, okay, Lord, where are they at? Bring them in. And I don't care if uh, male or female, whoever the Lord sends. I, I had a female bass player for a while, Laura Mendoza, and she was killer. She was a great addition to the band. People loved her. Uh, she got married and she's uh, doing some uh, veterans things with her husband, Dan now. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, God bless them and, and, uh, and all the musicians that I have had over the years, but the ones that I have right now, brother, uh, we are kicking ass and taking names. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you look back at the 89 performance, this 89 performance, I know for me, when I go back and for whatever reason, I never, I rarely go back and look at my old work of interviewing, <laughs> except Back in the beginning, it was all written out. It wasn't this yeah, kind of stuff. I got I'll you. go back and I'll I'll maybe catch a question that I quit asking people. And uh -huh. I'm thinking, wow, I need to revisit. So yeah. do you have you caught something from this specific performance that you go, you know what? That was pretty darn good. I need to I need to start doing that again. Was there anything like that you caught? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I still have the energy to do it. So, <laughs> yeah. it, it, and, and you know, when you come to a Mark Farner show, or, you know, even back as far as Grand Funk, I was all over the stage. I'm still all over the stage, but there's still uh, something that I picked up from this rock and roll soul recording that, uh, that I used to do in the, uh, synchronize things with the bass player but uh i have a a relatively new new bass player in paul randolph who joined me after we did uh alice cooper's album together mm -hmm. and uh, wayne kramer from the mc5 johnny b uh you know from mitch Ryder and the detroit wheels yeah. uh we were all in the studio together recording and uh you know i i ended up asking Paul because after hearing him play and then singing with him in the vocal overdub booth and uh, you got Bob Ezrin in there, great producer, mm. uh, you know, 
talking to you, instructing, giving instruction. And, and we just, we worked good together. And I, I asked him after that session, man, I mean, it was on the last day of the session. I said, dude, you're right here in Detroit. Would you consider going out and doing some of my shows with me, Mark Farner's American Band? He says, man, my dad was in the army and stationed in Germany. And every time we got in that damn car, he was throwing grand funk in there. So I probably know all your music anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm blessed to have these people with me now. And to look back on this performance of uh, Rock and Roll Soul, you know what? I hear the audience in there. And when I hear that audience, because of course, uh, Randy, this is what I use uh, to spur me on to go harder into the next song, to go you maybe look at the song list and go, oh, man, it ain't time for that yet. I got to do something else instead because of the, you know, the pitch of the <laughs> fervor of that audience. And it's there in this recording. It is there. You can hear the audience and you can feel the energy. Uh, that spurs us on. So to, you know, to answer your question, yeah, there's a lot that I got from that. And, and the biggest thing was queuing in on listening to my brothers and sisters, my fans that are standing out in front of me, the people that put me up on that stage. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful and thankful to them. And I've always wanted to be uh, the pleaser of my fans. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line, brother. Well, I think you've done that very well. Uh, even though these are all songs that people are familiar with, do you still can you still look at the set list on that album and say, all right, out of those, and they're they're all familiar favorites. Yeah, you would point to a specific song on this and say, all right, even though you know this fan. If you hear this, you're really going to dig the rest of the record and how well I did on that. Is there something in particular you'd like to use as the calling card? Yeah. Judgment Day Blues. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Because over the years when I've played this song live, people, you know, it's just inherent. If you're a rocker, you're going to love the blues. <laughs> it's where the rock came from. And to, you know, to play guitar, to complement what the words are saying, to emphasize, to help them along, you know, to embellish what you are performing. Uh, it, it all works for that. And, and the message you know, it's, there's no hiding it, man. You don't have to play it backwards to get the, the message <laughs> off. That's my brother, Randy. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. Sometimes just going forward is difficult enough, right? Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. What's your feedback so far from this? Well, we've got a lot of great feedback. Yeah. When I, uh, you know, listen to the people's feedback on Facebook, on uh, Mark Farner of the original Grand Funk Railroad, uh, which is Mark DiMartino's site. Um, thousands of people on there, thousands of fans that give their honest opinion and and they give the love. I feed on the love, man. And DiMartino has done such a great job of filtering out flakes because uh, you're going to have your flakes, as mm -hmm. you well know. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have your flakes. But God bless them. Uh, they can go flake out on somebody else's channel. It's clean. Everything that's on that channel is great. And uh, Susie uh, Anderson, she's she's a great one. And the people that, that gather on that site, and, uh, of course, Melissa Kuchirik, my publicist, mm -hmm. uh, doing a great job great with her point. and, uh, and Corey, uh, Steinman, who's uh, doing, put, doing all the posts on the website. They're, they're doing a good job for me. It's the people that we have behind us. If we didn't have that kind of talent, 
you know, handling the stuff in the background, I'm sure you can relate to this, you know, it wouldn't come off the way it does. But I can sit here comfortably talking to my brother. We're having a good conversation here. And I'm not thinking about, oh, my God, what button do I have to push? What didn't I do? What did I forget this time? You know, yeah, yeah. That, yeah we got people uh, in our in our corner backing us up. Now, I've caught a few of your more recent interviews, and, I, you know, I wouldn't ask this question, except it's been coming up. And so I wanted to throw it out at you in case there's anything new. I know you've made some comments in other interviews that you welcome a even a, a temporary reunion with the other guys. And I was just curious. Is there any progress on that? Any new developments in that area? Is there something where we could hopefully see some mending of the relationship, if not music, you know, if not personally, at least maybe musically and and uh, show some some progress in that area? Well, yes, because people actually have been praying and agreeing with that same prayer that I have been praying because I don't hate those guys. I don't. I, uh, you know, sometimes we just get off our path in life mm -hmm. and we are, we're on a wrong, you know, we took a right instead of a left. Um, but I, I want to be graceful with the same grace that I want to be applied to me mm -hmm. with the same forgiveness. I want to forgive with that forgiveness and hope for what you're talking about, brother Randy, that there'd be a healing enough to, to get back together. Even if, it, as you referred to, even if it was not a personal thing, but for the fan musically, musically, there's only three people on this planet that can make that noise. There's no other three people that can do that. It's only Mark, Don, and Mel. So for that resolve and for that end, I think there's hope, buddy. Uh, and as long as we're all still sucking air, I think there's hope. I do too. I hope I hope it happens because I don't I don't know if I ever told you this, but I you remember Dan Peak of America. Yes. I did the last interview he ever granted. Wow. And on the day I was transcribing the interview, I got a call from Steve Orchard, our mutual friend. Yep. He, it was because of Steve that I got the interview with Dan. And we, uh -huh. Dan and I had two chats. And on the morning I started transcribing, I got a note from Steve saying, are you sitting down? And I said, Steve, it's 5.30 in the morning. I should be laying down. What's up? He said, um, Dan passed away in his sleep just wow. just this you know somehow or another steve got the word very quickly yeah he said man he goes you got the last interview he ever did i wish that wasn't the case i really yeah. do I, you know but my point is there was the discussion in the that interview with dan and you could tell there was hurt there was there was confusion there was angst about that whole party in the ways and, and they never got to get together. And I really do hope and pray that for you guys and for other acts, I mean, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young is not going to be Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young anymore. There's no hope of that, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I hope, I hope for you guys, just even for no other reason, but just the relationship, Mark. I hope I'm joining you guys in prayer and joining you in prayer and the rest of the fans that that can happen. Because I think that would be, that would be a big Nash. message to everyone. Oh, yeah. Man, that would be so, that, that'd be the answer to prayer, brother. There's That's a lot right. of prayers going on. That's right. And, uh, I I feel where you're coming from. I know that uh, mm -hmm. that your words are sincerely spoken, and I, I really treasure that kind of narrative going out because that's what it's all about, our life, man. Just think if there was no forgiveness. Just think mm -hmm. of the hatred. And just think of the misleading that that could, uh, the lives that that could destroy. Mm -hmm. But because there is uh, forgiveness, and and that is really the the definition of love. Right. Love is forgiveness. It's embodied in forgiveness. 
And uh, if we can fight our way back through the hurt, through the misgivings, and remember where our heart resided in that love, the Lord will always bring us back to it. If we commit ourselves to it, it'll happen. I agree with that. I do. I really do. One final question. What's on your agenda for next year? What, what you talked about this other album coming in the spring. Yeah. What else is happening? Well, we've got a, a South American tour booked in uh, Peru and, uh, in Chile and, uh, and, uh, um, South America has always been good to me. Uh, the band, we talked about it the last time when we were just out in Jackson Hole on the 30th of November. We talked about going and and uh, getting excited in advance because the, the fans down there just love us. And, and even, even though a lot of them can't speak English, they can sing it. <laughs> they don't know what it means. But they, when I'm singing Heartbreaker, forget about it, dude. I mean, the audience is louder than the PA system. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. Going back to Brazil, you know, Sao Paulo, uh, it, wonderful people, great people, and they love American rock and roll. And they ask the same questions about that you just asked, is there any chance of the band getting back together? Because that's where they first heard me. Yeah. And even though... I'm not down there masquerading as Grand Funk because there's really only three members uh, that, that make that Grand Funk. And I did write over 90% of the Grand Funk catalog. And these people are very, very appreciative of that. And they show uh, a lot of emotion, a lot of love. So that's, that's a spring tour. I think it's uh, April. Uh, that we'll be going there, and then we'll be doing uh, the U.S. Uh, all throughout the summer. Cool. Well, I'm going to be watching that itinerary to see if we can finally meet face to face, hug yeah. each other. That would be great. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Mark, as always, this was fun. This was insightful. It was a blast for me. I hope it was for you. And as you know already, my door's always open for you to plug anything of your work or message you want to get out. All you got to do is ask and we'll make it happen. Okay. Thank you, brother Patterson. I appreciate it so much. It's been good to talk to you again, Randy. Uh, likewise. And I hope you have a very blessed and Merry Christmas, you and your family and your close friends there. Okay. It sounds good. You do the same brother. Thank you. We'll talk to you next year. All right. All for Jesus, man. The reason yeah. for the season. That's right. That's right. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. Bye for now.